So uh, I personally really believe we are minorities, but we do not deserve to be fed by trash by some really racist people. The reason I say that is, we might be poor, we might be suffering from make a good life, but please imagine that situation. If you are a poor person on the street, what is the best way you can feed yourself slash make the government pay for your food? That is simple. You commit a crime, you got sent to the jail. Then the government's going to take care of you and you won't starve at all. You will be full. But the problem is you don't have freedom in that way. And you cannot really have a dream. You cannot be the person you wanted to be. And that is a problem for the American society right now. They're telling minority people like us, hey, you are a minority and you are going to starve. There's literally no way you can achieve your American dream by the things that you used to believe. So the only option for minority people, they claim will be convert to be a socialist. But the point is, when you are a little expendable component on the machine, you don't deserve a dream. It's like you are in a jail, you won't starve, but you won't achieve anything. You cannot be the person you wanted to be. Hey everybody, welcome back to Be Not Afraid. Today my guest is Alvin Gool. I am so sorry if I butchered that. Alvin is a young man who is currently um, at college at a local university. I'll let him tell you more about that. And he's also um, recently come to America. So I wanted to get his story and to really feel kind of the way that I've been collecting these other stories of people who have lived under oppression um, and who really have come to have a respect and a value for America that many of our youth today don't have. So welcome, Alvin. Oh, thank you so much. It's such my uh, privilege to be here with all you guys today. <laughs> so tell me, what country are you from? So uh, I grew up in communist China, and I defected from China to America at the age 19. And that was about four or five years ago. Okay. Um, so are you now an American citizen or still waiting for citizenship? So uh, personally, I'm here on the uh, asylum seeker status, which means I believe if I return back to communist China for my behavior, for my speeches, definitely I believe it's my individual right. But the Chinese don't think that way. It's likely they will send me to the jail. And I don't want that happen. So I'm seeking asylum. So you are, this is what's going on right now in China. Yeah. Can you just give, I mean, what we see on China is TikTok. And people think that it looks just like Western civilization. And so I'd love for them to really get a view of what you lived in, how you grew up. So let's put it that way. TikTok, people say, well, it's just an app. And it's just a TV kind of like a thing. But people hardly realize TikTok is a TV that watches you. You don't watch that TV. <laughs> that's, that's a bit unnerving. I've heard that um, that your social media is focuses on excellence, whereas American tends to focus on stupidity a lot of the time. Sadly, sadly, that is true for many situations. So what is that, what is that, the other, just the other things I've heard, and correct me, please, if I'm wrong, but I've also heard that you only have a certain amount of time that you're allowed to use technology during the day. Is that true? Uh, so uh, when I was in China, um, the government does not regulate my time, like uh, how much time I can spend on social media or stuff like that. but they do regulate the time that a child can spend on video games right now. However, there's one thing that really arrests my concern. That is they block a lot of resources that people are supposed to enjoy. Because 
on those resources, people say whatever they believe, and that is against the communist doctrine. That's the reason why in China, there's no access to Wikipedia, there's no access to Facebook, no access to Twitter, no access to uh, Snapchat. There's not even a access to um, to the TV that watches you in China. So uh, TikTok, it is a Chinese company and it's a Chinese software. But the fact is in China, you do not have access to TikTok. In China, they have a Chinese version of a TikTok. It's called a Douyin. And what is that like? So uh, that is similar to TikTok, but only Chinese IP address can access to Douyin. And in those uh, channels in Douyin, you can pretty much only see Chinese nationals speak in Chinese and uh, say whatever they believe is the truth, which is heavily influenced by the Chinese government. And uh, I found this really ridiculous because for TikTok, that is pretty much a brainwashing thing in the United States because that will suggest to you the thing that feel like, a, how do I give this way? The TV would watch you and tell you what the TV thinks you must understand in their logic. For example, if you don't, if you haven't heard about a specific terminology before, the TikTok will try to find a term or a chance by a media or by a video that will suggest that terminology to you. Then in those resources or media or short videos, those influencers would work on the approach of normalize those terms. And most of those terms are from a critical race theory, and most of them have a definitely a really biased liberal perspective. It really doesn't matter if the person is left or right, but I don't think anybody should really agree with that way of brainwashing our kids. And I really do not approve that kind of thing happen anywhere. So how did you get your perspective since you were in China and you yes. were pretty much indoctrinated, right? You were pretty much, were you a communist in China? So uh, I, I was, and I was not. It's an interesting story. So um, when I was in, uh, in a grade school, like a elementary school, I did not have a quite good understand of what communism really means. In grade school, they would just tell us, you know, China is the greatest country in the world and communism is a fancy schmancy cool thing that nobody is really being oppressed. It is like a heaven. And if you research a little bit outside China, you will realize American people are suffering because there are gun violence and there are discriminations and uh, many American people, they're starving on the street because they couldn't get food. Yes, they did teach us that kind of thing in elementary school. But when we reached to junior high, they start to teach us, well, do you know how to figure out that problem? I mean, no kids ever understand how to figure that problem, right? right. So uh, they would tell the kids, well, the best way to figure that out problem is to think from a really critical perspective. So uh, they would tell people that there's no God, there's no heaven, there's only people, and the people are more advanced animals compared with other animals. But the focus point is, even people are supposed to be more evolved animals, they still told us we are animals. Even they told us it's a virtue to treat each other nicely. But the thing is, what they are really emphasizing is, it's a virtue to be nice, but it's a responsibility or natural law to humiliate other people who are less privileged. 
who are less privileged than you. So okay, wait, that wait. Is... let me just clarify. You said it's a virtue to be nice, but it's a responsibility yes, to, because... to make fun of or belittle people who have less than you. Yeah, exactly. That is pretty much what communism means. Because in communism, there are only two kinds of people. Rich people are about the same rich. And 99% of the rest of the population are the poor people. And they are about the same poor. So um, then communism pretty much taught us a lie in elementary school that you should be proud for what we have. Because in many places, people do not have the things that you are enjoying. The thing is, now we all know all those kind of things are pretty much lies. In America, are there people starving? Yes, but are they that common? Absolutely, no. Is gun violence a problem? Yes, but what about the mass stabbing problem in China? If there's no gun, people will fight each other with knives. If there's no knives, people will kill each other with hands. And actually, for the place where I'm originally from, um, they are running background checks for kitchen knives because they do not trust the people who have any power. Even the power is as simple as a kitchen knife. They will run a background check on you. If the police find you are not reliable of having any power, they won't, uh, they won't even order you to have a ticket to buy a kitchen knife. The thing is, the problem for communism is it lies to the people. And yes, they claim communism is as wonderful as heaven. But the thing is, they don't know in the United States, you can buy a kitchen knife as far as you want. They don't know in America, you have a right to protest the things you disagree with. And in China, basically, they tell the people, if you are a person, you have whatever you have. It's a virtue. Let's back to the point of virtue. It's a virtue to like a person. But the thing is, since China is in a, such an incredibly high pressure, and the people don't really have much freedom, when people don't have any freedom, they don't have any choice. When they don't have a choice, they don't have any resource. When they don't have any resource, they compete against each other. Yes, it's a virtue to like each other. But the thing is, when people are competing each other in the extremely high pressure, yeah. if you don't get this position, you won't have a food next day. If you are in that kind of a pressure, a virtue is just like a joke because people will only remember the second part of their doctrine. We are still animals and the people humiliate on each other. I found that thing really hypocritic because communism literally tell the people that itself cannot claim to be. That's pretty powerful. It reminds me of the book, Animal Farm. Yes, Animal Farm. Which makes what? me wonder, which, and then a lot of people will say, oh, Animal Farm, if you mention Animal Farm, you know, then you don't know anything about communism. It's much better than that. But I'm wondering when I think of Animal Farm, the first person I think of is um, uh, the one, I want to say it's a pig, but I'm not sure who is basically the press. Yes. Is, is it the press that, that teaches you what to think after school? Yes. Yes. So, okay. I really want to make fun of the regime who had to cast a severe casual to its own people and humiliate my family members because my family got threatened by the Chinese police. But there's another story. So um, when there is a leader, he told the people that they are not people, they are animals. The leader tells the people that they are not people so they can humiliate on each other. And the leader lied to the people that they are not people, but they are most privileged than anybody else who are people. That is crazy. That is insane. And that is immoral. And I have only one name for those kind of leaders. Well, they're pigs, <laughs> just like <laughs> animal farms, right? <laughs> yes.
Yes. Um. So tell me, when did you begin to realize that you were being lied to? Okay. So uh, that was a moment. So uh, personally, I was an underground Christian. And that started as a moment that in the school, they told us, there's no God, only people. It's a virtue to like each other, but it's the uh, responsibility to compete for whatever you deserve. That is a social Darwinism, but I personally cannot agree with that. And then I had a moment to feel like, well, hey, I really don't think we are animals and we should compete each other for the things that everybody should enjoy. I should have the right, no less than those bosses, those communist bosses tell me I have, but I do not really have. I start to uh, criticize whatever they told us at school because I really don't agree that we should have the responsibility to humiliate on each other. And I believe in this humanity, in this world, we have enough resources. We all share with each other with our agency. I'm not saying everybody should have the same amount of resources, but I'm saying that we should not be forced to fight each other in the term that to survive or not. And they basically also, teach you scarcity. Exactly, exactly. And I really don't think socialism, communism is the ultimate solution for the humanity. Because I remember when I was a young boy, I watched the American movies and the people in the movies eat tuna. Can you imagine that? In China, it's nearly impossible for residents to get a tuna. <laughs> so, uh, okay. In China, they always told us we are privileged. We are much better than Africa. And my dad used to work for a Chinese company, governmental run company, to work as a laborer in Africa, in Sudan. And when he returned back from Sudan, he brought us some food. And that included some canned tunas. And suddenly I realized, wow, tuna, that's not something we see a lot in China. And my dad just returned from Africa. Are we really even better than Africa? They have tunas, we do not. And I eat the tuna, and that was the most delicious food I ever had for little Alvin. Okay, so uh, let's back to the point. Since I disagree with the false crisis the communist government told us we must fight so hard about, I start to think about, well, since I do not want to humiliate another person for that, and I really do not think we should listen to the false claims the teachers made at school. And by a funny moment, a friend of mine who is a Falun Gong practitioner, if you haven't heard of Falun Gong practitioners before, that is also, also a minority faith group that is most severely persecuted by the Chinese government. And uh, organ harvesting happened to those people. So uh, my friend from the Falun Gong group shared me his VPN. And with this VPN, I got an opportunity to visit the websites which were blocked by the Chinese. And there's a website. A lot of American teenagers won't really read. They wouldn't really visit. But I found it's like a precious gift. That is a Bible gateway. Through internet, I got a chance to learn about the Bible. I got a chance to learn about it. We are all children of God. And it's not our responsibility. It's not even a virtue. But that is a duty for us to love each other, to take care of each other. And by understanding God and his grace in this world, we all understand, well, the scarcity is a joke. It's a lie. We do not consecrate whatever we have entirely to the Chinese government, to any communist government. 
because we work hard, we create our value and we deserve more resources than what we have. And for that moment, I became an underground Christian and I start to criticize the Chinese government as often as I can, either online or in the classroom. And I shared my VPN with a lot of my classmates. Some of them finally found a way to either read the Bible or, by the way, Bible is pretty much forbidden to sell in Chinese bookstores. And the only way in China to get a Bible is you know a Christian personally and I will give you one. But since it's illegal to pretty much preach in China, how do you know that person is a Christian or not, right? So, uh, okay, let's back to the point. I start to share VPNs with my friend. Some of them start to read Bible. Some of them start to look through the political reviews on websites like Radio Free Asia, BBC, or Voice of America, those websites. And I personally found it really interesting because when I read the real political review about the Chinese leaders, what really came to my mind is, wow, those people, they are taking advantage of the welfare that Chinese people created. They are not God. They are selfish. They are using your potential for their welfare and they lie to you. Again, they are not God. They are selfish people. And there is a right, a divine right, a freedom speech that you are supposed to criticize them. Because I think for every single Chinese, if they know what is really happening, what really happened, and what will happen in the future, they will all criticize the Chinese leaders. So uh, that is pretty much my experience of learning Christianity on the internet, become political active to criticize the injustice happening in China, and finally made me want to defect from China to America so can, I can embrace my faith. I can share my Christianity, my belief with people, and I can hold Chinese accountable by the precious freedom of speech. How about your family? Did your did your family come along with you on this journey? Oh, absolutely no. No. So, okay. <laughs> my family. Okay, let's put it that way. When I told them I want to be a Christian, they asked me, what's wrong with your head? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, they asked me, well, Alvin, to be a Christian, are you going to marry somebody in the future? I said, of course I am. <laughs> Where did you get the idea that all Christians must keep being single forever? And uh, by the way, I'm a, I'm a member of the LDS church. So when I became an LDS, my mom asked me, Alvin, I remember you really like spicy pepper since you are going to be a Latter-day Saint. Can you still have spicy pepper or onion or garlic, those spicy food you used to really like? I say, Mom, where did you get that information? I just had a lunch with the missionaries this noon. And for this lunch, and we had onion, we had onion rings. That was pretty good. <laughs> so uh, I would say Chinese people do not have a natural disapproval of Christianity. They have been disinformed and misinformed too much by the Chinese government. And that is the reason they have so much misunderstand of either LDS church, Protestant church, or Catholic church. But the thing is, in China, the most conscientious people who take care of the poor people around them were those group of Christians. I give you an example. In the city where I'm originally from, there were a lot of kids when they were born in a hospital or somewhere else. Their parents figured out they have a disability. They might, uh, they might not have four, uh, they might not have two legs or two arms. 
maybe they're missing some gifts that many people were given by God. So they got abandoned by their parents. That kind of thing happened everywhere. But the thing is, in China, there was the only one organization that I know were taking care of those kids were the local Christian church. And they used to run a completely self-funded orphanage for those poor people. And the church gave them an opportunity to grow up in a healthy way. There's no guarantee that they will survive in the barbarian-like, in the really animal-style competition of Chinese community. But at least those Christians were doing their best to do charity out of their own good intent. The natural charity they got from God, it was the Christians understand that most. But the year before I left China, Chinese government just made a law that religious group cannot run any orphanage or similar facilities. And their concern, yes, if you raise up kids in a religious perspective, the kids will become Christians. And the Christians are not trusted by the Chinese government. Simply because we understand we are people, we are not animals, and there is no responsibility that we must approve the crimes and the false information and the misinformation did by the Chinese government. Christians were the salt, the light in the really dark Chinese community. And I feel like those people deserve the most credit. So did you have to worship on your own or were you able to actually go to one of these churches? So uh, I used to attend several underground churches, family literally, churches. Were they literally underground? Like... <laughs> well, definitely we did not dig a hole and uh, have a congregation <laughs> there. So what I mean underground, yes. We do not inform the government that we worship God at a specific location because Chinese government would not recognize our faith. According to the Chinese law, if you want to be registered as a congregation location to worship God, you must be affiliated by the churches that are approved by the Chinese government. And in those churches, you might not see a cross, but I guarantee you, you will see a photo of Xi Jinping. It's kind of like a, when a church gives more credit to Caesar, to worship Caesar rather than God, then what kind of church is that? Those churches, governmental sponsored, governmental approved, mainstream, so-called, not underground churches in China, I severely question the legitimacy of their faith. And that's the reason I do not want to be part of them. I attended several uh, underground churches. So let's move over to America. You came here. Sure. You've seen some things here that are alarming. Yes. Um, from my outside and very limited as I've never, ever experienced communism. No, ma'am, you're very knowledgeable. I, I feel like a lot of what we're heading into, and, and it's crazy to me to see, um, really to see the animalistic behaviors that we're seeing on campuses, to see, yes. especially in the last week, right, with, um, with Hamas and, and pro-Palestine events. Yes. And for me, the pro-Palestine, pro-Israel, again, I've never been there. And so being a classical liberal, I mean, I'm I'm a conservative, but I'm I'm classical liberal in my belief of just leave people alone. You know, treat people decently, yes. leave people alone, let them be yes. what they are. Yes. But when I see people cheering for people who have executed infants, um, which is something that recently happened, I feel like we are turning animalistic. 
that is very true. That is very true. And actually, that reminded my experience in China. In China, they used to have a one-child policy, which means one family is only allowed to have one child because they believe there were too much population in China and they want to decrease the population. What they did was, if you are a female, they are going to give you two times a year a governmental brand mandatory pregnancy test. And if you, if you were found pregnant and you already have a kid, the government will arrange you a free governmental run, governmental sponsored, but mandatory abortion that is not optional. And why I mentioned that is because that happened to my own family. So uh, after me, I'm supposed to have a little brother. My mom was a victim of this one child policy. My mom loves me, loves that kid. And she wanted to say no. The problem is in communist country, when you consecrate everything to the government, you don't own anything. The government, the government told my dad, if you object this governmental abortion, we're going to take your housing back. We worked hard. We created our value. And we deserve a place as humble people to shelter ourselves. Now the government has everything, but we don't have every, we don't have anything. The government told us, no, you cannot live in the house that is supposed to be ours. If you don't get a portion, they're gonna take the house back. So I believe communism is slavery and they're sacrificing their kids through slavery. Hamas murdering the kids, that is animal behavior. So I believe we must hold Hamas accountable. Similarly, I love the kids. I'm a future educator. And I just cannot stand with those people who humiliate the most underprotected people who were kids. They were kids. They were born. They were not born. Doesn't matter. They need protection. They have their dignity. Yeah. So your parents, so you're an only child then? Yes. Okay. Only child. Love. How how was love expressed in a communist country? Is it love? Okay. Love is not commonly mentioned at any situation. My grandparents have been married for many decades. I never heard them saying they love each other. My parents have been married for about 30, 20 decades. I'm 24, turning 25. I never heard them saying, I love you. And love, I really don't know how to put it in the right way. But the thing is, I feel like in a communist country, they emphasize on discipline, obedience, and the fear you approve or not. Because if you do not approve, we're going to force you to do the thing that we want you to get done. That is a fear. That is a tyranny. That is pressure. In China, I lived 19 years. I never felt any love from the government, from my mom. Yes, she's a very good person. But the thing is, I believe that in a communist country, people should have the freedom to have more charity, to be more charitable to the people around them. Because the, job, because the government does not do its responsibility, so the people should have the responsibility to run the things that God told us to do. But it's almost because of that sense of desperation. There is no, there is no charity when there's that much there's desperation. No, there's no charity. There's no charity. Charity is not an option. 
the government does not even approve you to do charity because the government will think you're trying to make a comparison between you and the government. If you do better things than government, government will lose the trust from the people. When the government is stopping people from acting good, the government is promoting the bad. If that is not a tyranny, I don't know what tyranny is. Okay. So we have a lot of the things that you were forced to live under. Yes. Like right now, so many people in politics are saying abortion is a right. Everyone should be able to have an abortion. Let's celebrate your abortion. Meanwhile, in other countries, they don't have a choice. They're being forced to do this. It seems like people are being tricked into selling their freedom. Yes. Well, yes. they because they put a package around communism and say, oh, when we're well, they don't say communism, right? In America, they say socialism. It's when the we, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> can you explain that as what? as somebody who's lived it? Can you explain the two? Because people will say they're not the same. Well, they are the same thing. Socialism. Okay, let's put it that way. In China, people believe true communism have never been built. Okay, and the Chinese government believe all communist countries are only socialist countries, and we are all working together to build the true communism in this world. Okay, if a half true communism, which means socialism, already killed 100 million people, then how many people will real communism kill? That will be the entire human civilization. That will be the end of the world. Jesus will come back again. But <laughs> does that have to be that way? Come on, right? If a half true communism is that bad, how bad is a completely true hell? That means true communism. So in America, we have these people who who believe that we should dismantle the middle class, that the middle class is whiteness, that the middle class is oppressive. Um, okay. You know, now in China, um, when they when you say wealthy in China, you mean yes. uh, extremely wealthy, right? Like, yes. Like I've a seen Jack the movie Ma Very Rich Asians. Family. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so like, how is there a middle class? Would you have been considered middle class in your family? Absolutely, no. Oh. I don't think there's a real middle class in China. I think all the people who are suffering are about the same poor. And all the people who have governmental connections, whose relatives are governmental officials, and they can take advantage of starting a business, they can uh, take advantage of being corrupted to take the under table money, regardless how they make their money. That's the money that belongs to the people, do not belong to them. Well, that is the true meaning of a communism. Poor people are about the same poor, rich people are about the same rich. But really, communism is to take, to rob, to get rid of whatever poor people belongs and gave them to the highest party members. Yes, people may say middle class is bad. What about the top class, huh? So I would say in America, wealth is more evenly divided compared with Chinese society. And no, my family was not from a middle class. So what was, what was your home like if you were to describe your oh, your living sure. condition? So uh, my mom is an accountant and my dad is an electrician. And you know, in China, labors are not protected at all. They do not have after hours. They do not have a labor union that actually works to negotiate minimum wage and they do not have a way to protest to rally to entreat to the power for a better welfare does that sound like a communism for people well for me it is 
because the true communism is a true operation. Okay, sorry, my bad. When people blame capitalism, people do not blame the real rights that capitalism guaranteed the laborers, guaranteed the poor working class, guaranteed those people who are underrepresented. It was a capitalism. It was a freedom speech that is only guaranteed by capitalism to help them make their voice get heard. In true communism, well, is that real communism or slavery? Or what is the difference between communism and slavery? I cannot really tell the difference. Every single person that I've spoken to who has, whether that's been from Africa, China, um, the, it's always communism and slavery. So let's come back yes. to America and what's going on here. And um, I cannot imagine this more fragile class of people okay the identity politics group i cannot imagine them surviving in a government system that says do what we tell you or else well i really hope america does not become a country like that but as i can see the bad tendency is making this country losing the fundamental values that the people were originally gifted. America needs people to save Colombia herself. But the thing is, more and more young people in this nation are misinformed, disinformed by the wicked people through multiple kinds of technologies including but are not limited to TikTok. Those people are having radical theories from the internet. Those people were encouraged by the wicked educators from the college or from the high schools, middle schools. When those kids lack the basic understand of the rights they have, America, America's future is under siege, and I'm very worried about it. And that is the primary reason I want to be an educator. So tell me about that, because we're, we're both in Utah, and I know that there is an attack on um, many teaching, many of the teaching training type of things do head into the category of CRT do head into the anti-racist, all of this stuff. Yes. What have you experienced? Okay, okay. So one of my professors at BYU actually gave us an assignment and that is not even optional. And we can do three things. First one is to break a gender norm. I am a male, and in that way, breaking a gender norm for me will be wear a dress at school. I'm not going to do it. And the second thing we could do is to attend a informal sexual misunderstand group, what? which means... <laughs> Can you explain a, that? Okay, definitely. <laughs> Informal, which means they are not even approved by BYU. Even BYU is becoming more and more liberal. It's a mess because those groups are so radical that BYU does not even approve them. Sexual misunderstand, which means you are homosexual. And I disapprove sexual misunderstand, like being lesbian, gay, transsexual, I'm just going to clarify that word. Did you say like that. sexual misunderstand? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, okay. uh, and the another, uh, so uh, another thing we are required to do is to attend a informal sexual misunderstand group, which means if you want or not, it doesn't matter. You need to attend a group that sponsors their deeds. 
And the third option is to attend a pornography sponsor, is a pornography addiction help group. But we don't know where it is. And the professor later eliminates that option, which means we cannot attend a pornography addiction help group anymore. We can only choose from either support the sexual misunderstand activities or be a part of that problem by ourselves. We don't have an option. And that is some of the professors of BYU are actually doing. We are good people, but they don't give us a choice. So what do you, what are the options then? Do you actually have to do this in order to graduate? Okay, okay. I have to do this as a part of the requirement of a class. And the only you pass that class, you can be recognized as a licensed educator in Utah, which means to be a teacher through BYU. You have to do it anyway. <laughs> Did, did I wear a dress? Did you wear a dress? <laughs> Absolutely, no. Okay, so my way of so-called challenge the gender norm is by claim that my pronouns is not he. I said, well, you want to know my pronouns? Are you sure? You got to call my name. Use the pronouns I told you. Yes, I am. Okay. So uh, I claimed well, my pronouns is His Majesty. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, sir, ma'am, that is my pronouns. If you want to address me, you need to call me His Majesty. That is my pronouns. That is my gender pronouns. That is my gender norm. I want to break. Do you respect it or not? And surprisingly, a lot of people actually, well, they complied. <laughs> they say, well, that is your right to identify as anything you want, but it does not mean that I have to completely believe what you say. I say, it doesn't matter. I told you I'm His Majesty. You need to call me that way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, it takes a little hassle to actually fight against this kind of indoctrination at school. <laughs> were, you, were you surprised? Were you, were you shocked? You have such a joyful personality, but I would find it extremely disappointing to think that I'm going to a faith-based school. Yes, it was really mind-blowing. It was really mind-blowing. And never expect the BYU will actually tell people this kind of a wrong doctrine, will actually force people to challenge the good faith they have been having for many, many years. Yes. That was very mind-blowing, and I feel really, really, really upset. But the thing is, they can offend me as much as they want. They can definitely fail me in the school if they really wanted me to do something like that, if they really want to fail me. But there's one thing they cannot take away from me. That is the peace and the joy of following God in my heart. There's a Zion in my heart. I'm a part of a Zion, and the Zion is a part of me. And they cannot take that away. I love that. I, I love that. You. Um. So what, what other things have you seen? What have you seen with the students? Because you just, I mean, I'm shocked. I'm utterly shocked at that story Me too uh, <laughs> i was uh, shocked too and, and the thing is is that they have no hierarchy when it comes to intersectionality or i guess they do have a hierarchy when it comes to intersectionality because you would think that you being asian from communist china <laughs> that your your inability to um to compromise on your newfound freedom um, should be protected Yes, it's under not. the name of diversity. <laughs> diversity. No, they promote something that is exactly what social hierarchy is. They are claiming some people have been treated unequally, so we need to protect their equality. But they did not say the second part of the sentence, 
The second part of the sentence is everybody's equal, but some people are more equal than others. That is exactly what Animal Farm told people. And that is a pure evil of communism. And that's what you're watching on BYU's campus right now. Exactly. It happens a lot of places. It happens in many classrooms. I cannot conclude all the bad things in one sentence, but BYU is running down the hill and BYU needs a person to help. I don't know who that person is. Is that our prophet? Is that a high council? I do not know. But without some intervention, BYU will be wasted. So how, do, are there other kids who are really struggling with this? I'm, I, I call you kids, but. <laughs> well, hey, you, I mean, in the perspective of a God, we are all his children, right? We are all kids. <laughs> yes. So, but are, are there other students that are struggling? So, uh, there are students struggling, that is for sure. But most of them are not as outspeaking as I am. I'm not that kind of person who I can pretend I agree with something when I do not. Because if I just pretend I agree with communism, when they say China is the most happy country in the world, if I just pretend I agree, I say amen. I would be live a not really happy, but at least the easy life in China. Even competition is hard. I do not have to suffer from separation with my family. Now, I don't really know what's the next time I can see my family. I don't know if I can see them in this secular world anymore because again, I am a asylum seeker in this country, but I'm closer to God by being a part of a Zion. I have my Lord, I have Jesus Christ, and I'm joyful in this way. It's such a beautiful, I, I, I love your faith, and you are a new convert, isn't that true? Yes, I am. Yes. I, jo I joined the church in Iowa three years ago. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. yes. It's, um. I mean, it's, it's, I do feel like Every single person that I speak to, well, no, one person, one person is still an atheist because she'd seen too much. Yes. She, she became a, a communist. Uh, Mao came to power when she was 16 years old. Yes. And so, but the people that I've talked to from like Eritrea, they, they always say that the thing that held them together, that let them be able to make it through, that gave them hope was yes. their faith. Yes. That is a faith. Without a faith, without God, we don't have any meaning in this world. And uh, since we are all meaningful, we are all specially gifted, we are all specially amused, and we are all working on to make this world a better place so our children can live, maybe in decades. Yeah, I feel like that is a true meaning. That is what we are supposed to do in this world. We cannot just think about our power struggle, how to remove some specific person from the office so I can have a better chance of giving an idea. No, that should not be the primary focus for our community. We need to think about the deeper threat of our community, how our kids are being taught at school, and how bad it is to really bring communism here. I really don't want the country I love, which is here, to become the country I left, which is China. Right. And yes. do you see that in the text, in the in, when you're studying for being a teacher, other than the gender stuff? Do you see it in the text for what you're preparing to teach? Are you are you preparing to teach um, grade school K twelve or uh, secondary? Secondary, okay. Yeah. So, do you see that? Do you see the indoctrination that you saw? <sighs> yes, yes, I obviously see. So, uh, to be a teacher, 
in Utah, most likely you need to teach a test called a praxis. And the praxis test is test of a knowledge based on liberal understand. For example, in that test, it's likely they are gonna test you what Ronald Reagan did for this nation. And they expect you to give an answer that Reagan caused poverty. That is 100% against the truth. But the thing is, when teaching system as a whole is run by those people who have the monopoly, who have the authority out of a check and a balance to regulate what the correct answer is, good teachers don't have many choices. You would either pretend you apply or you do not comply at all. And sooner or later, you run into the big trouble. Well, I ran into a big trouble. I would say maybe it's likely gonna happen sometime soon or sometime later in my career life, but I still want to tell the truth. I just cannot pretend that I agree with something when I do not. Yeah, um, I wanna yes. I wanna read a quote to you, but I have to open up my phone to pull it up. Oh, you know, thank Ale you, Alexander Sojournis. Solzhenitsyn? Uh, I'm not very familiar with that person, ma'am. Okay. He is in Russia. Just very simple. But he says, let the lie come into the world. Let it even triumph, but not through me. The simple step of a courageous individual is to not take part in the lie. That is very true. Because for all the people who are fighting for a better, for a more equal, for a more honest world, our kids are gonna live tomorrow. I really don't say how myself can be benefited from the struggles we're fighting about. If I want to be a tenure teacher, well, I just pretend I agree with something when I don't. If I want to be my, close to my family, I love my family. I'm the only kid. If I want to have an easier life, I just pretend I agree with what the communists say at school. Everything will be easier. But that's not the meaning of life. I really see a lot of nobility, the people who are fighting with a just cause to correct the wrong ideas have been implied on our kids very honorable out of any selfishness because in 50 years we are not going to be benefited from this society but our country in that way can have a future and i think future really matters well i really appreciate you having this conversation with me because thank you it's so important that we hear from the voices of the people who have experienced it because we can give our opinions one way or the other. We can share our fears one way or the other. But when people have faced it, one thing, and this is huge, is that if you have overcome something, if you have, if you have been through the fire, you've got the strength to not turn around and go back. You, you know that dying is better than living on your knees as a slave. So thank you so much. I think everybody, everyone who has been my situation would do the same thing as what I have done. If they think about it, they will realize that their dignity does not allow them to comply with the lies. That's that's perfect. Thank dig you. Dig dignity is the thing that we are, we exactly. are sacrificing. Exactly. Dignity. Just do not comply. Please do not comply when the bad things happen. Thank you. It's because Jesus did not comply and he took our pains, our sins on the cross. If we cannot be as courageous and as outstanding as our Savior, which nobody would ever can, at least we do some little thing. We take a little extra mile. We all do the things we all want to do. Listen to your heart. 
you really want the things to happen in the right way. So why don't you do it right? <laughs> Alvin, thank you so much. I'm so glad to have met you. You are thank you. you are a gem. And yeah, it really made my evening to speak with you. And I'm gonna share this on Sunday yes, so that please. people have a, a spiritual experience on Sunday. So thank you so much, ma'am. It will be my honor to share my limited knowledge with the people because I know in America, we are the silent majority. We are really quiet, but I don't think we're gonna treat our dignity with the little non-exist compensation we got from the dictators. Our founding fathers created this nation, and I don't think America believes in slavery. I have a lot of hope for this country, but meanwhile, I also acknowledge that some serious steps must be taken or this country is gonna become another China. Yes, well, I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much, Carrie.